Hey, welcome back to the show. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Joe Anderson here. I'm a certified financial planner. Big Al Clopine, he's a CPA. We got two very special guests, Andy. We do. I'm super excited about this. Bethany and I actually met at uh, FinCon, and we bonded. Yes. So I said, we got to have you guys on the show. <laughs> so we have with us Ellie Kay and Bethany Bayless. They're the founder and director of communications, respectively, of the nonprofit Heroes at Home, which is a free financial education event that they've taken across the country and around the world for the last decade to provide financial education to help United States Armed Forces families pay off debt, build savings, and learn how to get more for less. Ellie Kay is America's family financial expert. She's the wife of the world's greatest fighter pilot, I understand. She's the best-selling author of 15 books and a popular media guest on Fox and ABC News, among others. Ellie and Bethany also host the Money Millhouse podcast, where they share a cup of coffee or four over Ellie's kitchen table, and they brew up money-saving tips and tricks for anyone's lifestyle. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having us. This is so Thanks, fun. Thanks, nice to be here. Hey, you know, this is very cool and special to me. My, my best buddy um, is a senior chief in the United States Navy. Uh, he is His wife actually works with Andy and I. Um, and he needs your help because he is physically irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> and he listens to this podcast, so I'm sure uh, Mikey Martin That'll would help. be happy for your help. So I really appreciate everything you do for the armed forces. We're here in San Diego, and of course it's a big military town. And so the, the work that you guys are doing is absolutely incredible. So it's just an honor to have you both on the show. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. And with a friend like you guys, he ought to be doing better with his money. You know, he's got some good friends here. Yeah, he just does the opposite of everything that I tell him to do. <laughs> okay. Maybe you well, should then, use some reverse psychology on that exactly, one. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So why don't you guys give us an overview of what Heroes at Home is and then also talk about the Money Millhouse podcast. So basically... We've been working in this space for quite some time now, and we founded the nonprofit, uh, which is actually SAFMR approved. So what that means is that we are, we are certified on the highest levels of the DOD to be able to take financial education directly into the bases, where we can talk directly to military members. They trust us. Everything we have submitted has been vetted, and they trust us not to sell, uh, because unfortunately in the past there have been some predatory presenters uh, that have people sign up for their annuities on the spot or oh, wow. other products. Yeah, other products. So that that's quite a distinction. We're only one of three, only three organizations, including like the USAA Ed Foundation and the First Command Ed Foundation, and then us. And so uh, we're excited to have a place at the table to be able to do that. And it is our joy and privilege to be able to go and talk to these military members and their families. And primarily, we're talking to the military members. So about 80% of our audiences are in uniform, and we do it during the duty day. And they came, they come to us. Sometimes it's mandated, you know. Sometimes it's that that mandatory fun. And therein is the challenge for Bethany as our high energy millennial MC to get them all warmed up and to turn that crowd, which she does very effectively. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. We love what we're able to do for our military members, and they have a very special place in our heart because what my mom is not saying is that we are a military family ourselves. My dad served 30 years in the Air Force. He retired as the world's greatest fighter pilot, as we call him. <laughs> my my older, older brother, Philip, he went to the Naval Academy and graduated and now teaches at the Naval Academy. He commissioned as a Marine. And my younger brother, Jonathan, is in the Air Force. He's a fighter pilot. And my youngest brother, Joshua, graduated from West Point, and he's an infantry officer. So oh we have a little bit of military in our blood. Yeah, right. Uh, and it's, <laughs> it's really fun for us to be able to go connect with our family and the people that are so close to us, just like like your your friend is. They're, they're our family, too. So tell us about the Money Millhouse podcast. That's a little bit different, right? It is a little bit different. So we have a lot of coffee. We both love coffee. I think I got my love of coffee from my mom. And we we just sit over a cup of coffee and we just have conversations. We, we've worked together, traveled together for five plus years, much less, you know, the whole growing up, me growing up with her and all that. Um, so we just have this great relationship and we have so much fun. We, we think we're hilarious. <laughs> we make each other laugh all the time. We think we're the funniest thing ever. And so I, we just have so much fun talking to each other. 
and talking to our friends about money and what it looks like to to just live in with that that lens of financial responsibility and that lens of being able to to save. And so we are geared a little bit. We have two generations. We have my generation, the millennials, who are young professionals. They're starting out. They're saving. They're they're learning about retirement. They're learning things that like, oh, I'm an adult. I have to do this stuff. What? What does that mean? What does that look like? And then we also have a generation that uh, is my mom generation that loves to listen, to keep things in mind. We touch a little bit on entrepreneurism because we are both entrepreneurs at heart. And we just have a fun, fun time talking about money. We like to say that we're kind of like, you know, we're the gateway into financial literacy for people who don't necessarily like talking about stocks, which are fun. Like we love stocks. They're super fun. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe that's not what you always want to listen to at nine o'clock on a Monday morning. So there you go. <laughs> that's a little bit about the podcast. Excellent. Uh, how did the transition? So um, a military family, and then there's this passion for financial education. How did the, the, the passion for financial education come about? I think that kind of started with me. I was a born entrepreneur, had my first business at the age of seven. By the time I was 12, I paid for a trip to Spain to go see my cousins. By the time at I was 12. 15, at 12, yes, through my own businesses. And then by the time I was 15, I paid cash for my first car. So I was kind of a born entrepreneur. I was a broker for a number of years before I met my and married my husband. And then I married into $40,000 of undeclared consumer debt. He looked, he looked good in a flight suit. I didn't ask him for his credit report. <laughs> Big mistake. Big mistake. So now... Now, when our kids bring home a significant other, they bring that significant other's um, credit report. So, <laughs> yeah, perfect. there you go. Perfect. So, so my husband took, he was in aerospace at the time. He was a reservist. He wasn't full-time active duty. And so he took a $50,000 a year pay cut to leave aerospace, go back into the military as a captain. And we were, and, and then, I mean, he had two daughters and then he kept me pregnant for the next seven years. So we... <laughs> We had five babies in seven years. You see Bethany's reaction to that? She really <laughs> likes hearing about her parents, you know, <laughs> procreating on government time. But uh, so we, we moved 11 times in 13 years. So there, there was no way for me to keep my previous career field. And so I became a master at saving money. And that's how I did it. We paid off all of that consumer debt on one military man's income wow. in two and a half years. Fantastic. And so, yeah, and out of that came the whole passion for becoming more financially literate. It led to my first book, and then 15 books later, we're still doing it. Um, well, you, you know firsthand, but help our listeners um, understand maybe the difficulties that maybe someone in the military has versus not when it comes to finances. Because, you know, you moved how many times and, you know, switching jobs. So it's, it's very difficult for maybe the spouse of someone that's in the military to find full-time work if you're moving every couple of years. So can, can you talk about the challenges and then some of the things that they can do to potentially put themselves in a great financial position such as you have? Certainly. I mean, one of the things Bethany and I see when we go from uh, base to base is that military spouses and military spouse hiring is a significant issue. And if you're moving as many times as, you know, I said we moved, uh, then it takes you two to three months to find a job and they may not want to hire you because they know you're going to move again. And so the continuity in employment is a really big issue. And so those are the, one of the, some of the things that we have to help military spouses with. That's why uh, the mill spousepreneurship is very popular in the military community. They're, they're starting side hustles. They're, they're getting um, like an AFC, accredited financial counselor certification uh, designation so that they can take that. That's a mobile portable type of career. So there are some career fields that are portable in terms of military spouses, but we try to help them bridge the gap when it comes to how to be able to succeed. And one of the things, it's, it's very it's simple, and that is live within your means so that when you are moving all of those times, then you can have less debt to worry about as you're moving from place to place. And Bethany, what would you say is the number one um, the thing that happens in military families when it comes to wasting their money? <laughs> Just what would you say, Bethany? 
One of the biggest ones is buying a brand new car. car so right. we see that frequently is the car payment, especially for our young military members who got their first paycheck, their very first job out of out of high school, and they think, oh my goodness, I have money, and this car payment is exactly what I'm making right now. It's perfect. <laughs> this is exactly what I should do. So if you drive across the base, you'll see the dorms parking lot, and you'll see yes. Camaros and Mustangs and the most beautiful cars. And if you drive just a little bit further, you'll go to the commander's lot where you'll see the 1991 Toyota Camry. You will see <laughs> those manual cars. They're not super shiny, but they're all paid off. So that's a little bit one of the things. But what, going back to what my mom said, one of the things that she said often that I love is that what her part-time job was as a military spouse, when she had all those kids, when she was staying home, her part-time job was learning how to save money. And so you don't necessarily have to go out and make money. That's a great thing. There's lots of ways to do that. But if you take a step back, if you really put in the time in cutting back on all these little areas when it comes to menu planning, when it comes to the grocery bill, when it comes to just all the little ex- where you're spending and where you're impulse buying or all of those things. If you take the time and you put that time into it, that can be your part-time job is to learn where you can save so that you can make that income go a little bit further. Well, that's creative. That's a nice one. Yeah. So let's talk about what some of the other challenges that uh, us civilians don't think about when it comes to military finance and what the solutions are for those challenges. Well, one of the other challenges besides the, the spouse employment is when you move. Yes, the military pays for you to move, but guess what? There are families moving from Hawaii to Alaska because oh their bases and, and where they work, I mean, and it's significant. So think about it. You have got young enlisted uh, military member and their spouse, and they may be 22, 23 years old. Some of those families already have a couple of children, and they're only making, you know, depending on their special duty pay and all of that, they're making between 25 and 30 uh, a year and they're going to have to they don't have to pay for their move but they got to pay for snow suits yeah. for everybody they have to pay for coats um every time we move even if we live in base housing we need new things for the house we may need blinds um you know you don't want to hang up sheets and they yeah. won't let you so all <laughs> of the things like that so there's all of these additional expenses that come up and then one other quick thing i'd like to mention is that when that military member deploys the military spouse has a lot of additional expenses. So if they have smaller children, especially like when we went to Alaska, we saw this, if that spouse is deploying for a year, they ain't gonna stay up there for a year in Alaska. It's just too dadgum cold. So they'll take the babies and they'll go and they'll nest. It's called nesting. They'll nest in the lower 48. Well, if you think about it, you've got this young um, enlisted uh, family and they're having to pay for tickets to fly down. Maybe the parents, you know, their own parents will help them out with that. They can only afford that ticket once uh, to be able to go down. If things are extended or something like that, that can be an issue. And so when they're deployed, there's all these additional expenses that come up because you're worried about your your spouse's safety. I mean, it really is hard. I, I, I like to say that it's, it's hard for a spouse to have their military member deploy and, and, and now as, I'm, as a mom, it's even harder to see my babies go off sure. and deploy. But you're worried about that. You're concerned for their safety. And so you're not really into like saving every nickel and penny and stuff like that. And, and sometimes you're exhausted. And so you spend more money on eating out, you know, mm-hmm. all the, those extra expenses. And so things can really add up even during deployments. And those are things that civilians don't always see. They just hear about the special duty pay and things like that. And they don't always appreciate the fact that, okay, not only are they having to deal with finances, but uh, they're having to deal with life and death. They're having to deal with those really big concerns that they have. Hey, um, what benefits um, or added benefits, if there are any, um, that military individuals have that maybe don't even know that exist? Um, I know that you guys do a lot of education um, for um, our troops. But, you know, maybe you know, there, there's people, uh, there's a lot of people that listen to our show. Well, not a lot. There's probably four or five that <laughs> listen to our show. Um, but there, there, there could be something out there that maybe they should, that they should know about to help them um, become more maybe financial savvy or, or help them build that financial independence long term. Joe, I love this question because it's one of my favorites. There are so many incredible resources available to our military families on base that are not available for us as civilians. And so I'm a civilian. There's a lot of things that they are able to get. My biggest one, number one tip 
that I can give is the Airmen and Family Readiness Center or the Military Family Readiness Center, the, the readiness center on base. And it's, for Navy families, it's fleet and family. And they can go to these centers on base for financial education and for for so many different resources. The counseling that they're able to get there is also incredibly crucial. It's something that us as civilians would pay $300 an hour for if we were to get somewhere for ourselves, but this is free for military members and their families. And a lot of times it's seen as a last resort. You go to these places if you're in trouble or if you're in crisis, and that's that's a, not necessarily true. These resources are available on base for free to help you with things that you have questions about. So if you wanna write, if you wanna create a special spending plan for your family. They're able to walk you through that. When it comes to your credit cards, if you have credit card debt, student loan debt, they help you come up with a plan to pay down those those cards or that debt. And they walk through your credit score. They can explain the difference between a credit report, a credit score, all of those things. And this is free to all military members. All they have to do is they walk in, they can sign up for appointment. They have classes that are available there. It is my favorite resource that's available to them for free. That's it's fantastic. for free. Excellent. Yes. Very cool. Adding to that real quick. So we have a few things that when we go and teach financial education on bases that not all service members are taking advantage of. Uh, right now there's a BRS, which is a blended retirement system. They, If you've been in 12 years or longer, then you're grandfathered into the old retirement system. If, you're, if you um, come into the military this year, you automatically get the new one. And then those people in that no man's land have to make the decision. So that's a really big thing. They need to make that decision uh, because they could be losing some money if they don't opt into it or if they don't do, make the best choice that's available to them. The second thing is making sure that they take advantage of the TSP and that they go back in. If they were not one of those military members that automatically get a, uh, a lifestyle fund um, that is available to them that uh, then they sometimes they have what they're in the G fund. So they need to make sure that they're in the L fund of some kind. So the G fund is just a, a basic like 1% or less. And whereas the L fund is some better investing based on your age. So they need to modify that. We found some poor military members that have had 10 years in the G fund. Oh, wow. Thinking they're making all kinds of money. So that's important for civilians, too, that have a, a thrift savings plan. And then the last thing is the savings deposit program. So this is a best kept secret. And you would not believe how many people that are listening to your show today that may be military that have never participated in that. So when you deploy into the theater, into a combat zone, after 30 days, you qualify for the SDP. And you can put in up to $10,000 and to make a guaranteed 10% return for as long as you're in the theater. And then it continues 60 days after you get back. Wow. So when we were in the past, when we've spoken to Navy SEALs, the, the savvy ones, the, they can keep those going all the time because those special ops groups are in and out of the theater so frequently uh, that they, you know, they keep that 10% going on $10,000 on a regular basis. So those are my secrets. Uh, and those are things that military families should be taking advantage of. A, qu a quick question, a follow-up question with that. Is there automatic enrollment for um, military individuals um, in the TSP, or do they have to enroll themselves? Well, they need to do the enrollment themselves in terms of uh, participating in the, the plan. TSP. Yeah, they do. I mean, they're going to be sent um, a pin. They're going to be sent all of this information, but they have to do that. They have to do that themselves. And like I said, now new people that are enrolling in it, they automatically are signed up in an L fund. There's L50, there's L40. It depends on your age and how close you are to retirement. So that part is a good news, but they do need to opt into that. And especially like, I mean, we can get into the weeds with BRS, but there is a matching element as well involved and they have to sign up and they have to opt in if they're wanting to do the matching portion of BRS. Is there, um, how much education is there when, when new recruits come in to talk about the TSP or to talk about, you know, the Roth component of it versus traditional and compound interest? And is that what you guys do in, in, in some instance to, to, to educate the younger individual? Because, I mean, if you're 20 years old going in there, just putting 25, 50 bucks to begin with, I mean, it could make a, a very huge difference in their lives. Yeah, there's a, a certain amount of classes they have to go through when they're transitioning into the military. There's a certain amount of required education. And 
with this new BRS system that's coming out, they're now requiring touch points throughout their career for them to get that financial education throughout their career. This is something that's new, they're rolling out. And then what we would do is we would come alongside those resources available on base, the Airman Family Readiness, Military Family Readiness, all those readiness centers, we come alongside of them and we give that financial education, but pointing them right back to that sustainable resource available to them on base. So we do add some financial education that's very needed right now in the military because there is a good element to that. But when it comes to adding more throughout the career, you know, it's one of those things that we talk to commander after commander, commander who say, I wish I had this when I was their age. Mm -hmm. I wish I had this when I first got in the military. I wish I knew all of these things. So we just kind of come alongside and, and help what they're already doing. On awesome. Basis. And, and we're, we're essentially a commercial for the military and family readiness center. So the way I like to liken is I'm a mother of seven. And so when my ch ch children were teenagers, I could tell them things all day long and they wouldn't listen. So my daughter, I, I won't mention her name, <laughs> but let's say she's, she's going out on a date. And I say, hey, you know, Bethy, it's cold outside. You may want a jacket. And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I say that a couple of times. Then the boyfriend shows up and say, hey, you may want to grab your hoodie. It's a little chilly outside. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and so that's what it's like on bases. So you've got your commanders, you've got your military family readiness center, you've got the drill instructors, you have all these people telling these young military troops, okay, here are some things you need to know about finances, you need to do this. And they just don't listen. But then we come in with a shiny show and it's fast paced and we do a live Twitter chat and <laughs> we've got this amazing MC that has just got so much energy to burn and we give them free <laughs> gifts. I mean, we give them we give them gift cards and iPads and books and all kinds so of stuff. So of course they're going to listen to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and so that's yeah. what we do. But but we we like to augment what's already being done and highlight it. Hey, so what are you guys chatting about on the Money Millhouse? We are getting into a season where the holidays are coming up and the beginning of the new year, just things that we can come back on and check into. So we recently had an episode when it comes to spending family time that doesn't have to spend a lot of money. So making those holiday traditions, making those things that can last for for years and years and years, but it doesn't have to cost you a lot. We had a great episode with Tasha Corcoran from Our Big Happy Life. And then coming up, we have some excellent episodes on retirement which is so much fun <laughs> i'm serious it is so much fun <laughs> retirement's the best and i'm at an age right now where my husband and i are thinking about this we're thinking about practical ways that we can be putting money away for the future but also thinking about retirement maybe in a different way in a new way and so those are some of the episodes we have coming out and we just have again I mean, you might take my word for it or listen to the podcast. I think we have a lot of fun, and we think we're really funny. <laughs> uh, Ellie K, Bethany Bayless, we really appreciate you hanging out. Uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you well, thank so much you. for having us. And thanks for having us. And we're you're going to have to be on our podcast as well so that we can say we have had you guys on our podcast. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, then that will get our listenership up like one million fold. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, check them out at themoneymillhouse.com and heroesathome.org. we got to take a short break. The show's called Your Money, Your Wealth.